Hi, welcome back to Park Parent Pointers. I'm Bree. Uh, today we're going to be talking about hyperbaric oxygen. We're going to keep this train going, keep chatting about um, all the good stuff that hyperbaric does for our hypospadias patients. And don't mind me, I'm going to be looking over at my computer. I have a couple notes here that I wanted to discuss of patients that have asked questions and kind of want to know a little bit more about everything. So you're wondering how the process starts. Hyperbaric facilities can be easy to find. You do a quick Google search and take a look at, um, you know, what's close by um, your area, what's kind of the easiest to do in regards to school, homework, all those good things. Make sure that it's it's good and, and unique to you. Um, if there isn't a place that's close by, I've had a few patients where um, they had a location that was like three hours away, just one way, it was three hours. And so if that's the case and we plan early enough Maybe we could fill out some family leave paperwork. I can try and get your job to give you paid time off, maybe some vacation time, and you just stay in Dallas. And that way we get that covered. Um, and so questions to ask the facilities, whether you stay here, I can answer those questions for you. But if you'll be back home, these are questions to ask. Are they a mono or multi-chamber facility? If you saw my video last week of R3, that was a, a mono chamber. And you guys got to see that it wasn't scary, it wasn't overwhelming, um, that it, it's really doable. So that's, that's an option for your kiddo. And then there's a multi-chamber. In those facilities, he's gonna get in the chamber with basically like sitting in a room, sitting in a chair, and the way he gets the oxygen is by putting a helmet on. So in those cases, we tell the kiddos that they're um, astronauts and they're getting off in the spaceship and we try to make it really fun. But keep in mind that even though you can get in the, the chamber with your child, that he actually has a helmet on and he, that's what is giving him the oxygen instead of being in a, a mono chamber where he can just lay down and, and most of the time they correspond with nap time or you know whatever it may be. Um, so those are the questions to ask. Our protocol. So he's going to have um, 60 minute treatments, but that does not include the time it takes to compress the chamber and decompress the chamber. So 60 minutes, we want him to be at two ap atmospheric pressure. So 2.0 ATA is the way that they could call it. That's what we want him to be at. And in order to get to that pressure, we have to compress it. So, so you know, when you're sitting on an airplane, and they are going through all the safety measures, they're usually compressing the, the airplane at that time. And that's what they do inside the chamber. So they'll compress it. Sometimes that takes anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. It could be a little bit longer. So that's added before and after the 60 minute treatment. So normally you're looking at about 90 minutes of treatment time um, that you'll have to kind of uh, correspond with before or after surgery. Um, additionally to that, we would like two room air breaks. So Throughout the majority of the treatment, your son is gonna be getting 100% oxygen. Two times in the middle of that treatment, he should be going down to 21% oxygen. And I know that sounds overwhelming, but 21% oxygen is how much I'm breathing right now. That's how much is in the atmosphere, that's how much we're breathing every day. There's a mix of nitrogen, carbon, different things that are all into the atmosphere, but there's 21% oxygen on average. So we want the treatment to drop down to that 21%, that's when we notice the stem cell growth. That's when we notice all the great properties, that vascularity, that circulation. Um, and, and actually next week, I'm gonna go into more depth of what the science behind what hyperbaric does. So bear with me now, um, but we'll be chatting about, you know, exactly what happens in the body with the hyperbaric. So that's, that's pretty exciting. So, um, but yes, so that going down to that 21%, all those properties are shown. And then we do that for about five minutes and go back up to the 100%. And you'll do that twice. Um, in some cases, some facilities, um, for whatever reason, don't necessarily like doing the room air breaks. If any, if you know, if you're having strong, if you're struggling to find a facility and they aren't in the, the facility that you actually find, won't do the room air breaks, then that's fine. There are some facilities that make you go up to 2.4 to do the room air breaks. Some are comfortable doing it at 2.0. Just call me. I'll try to talk to the facility, see what's going on, and maybe there's something that we can accommodate. Um, let's see. Next thing is tips and tricks. So I'm sure um, maybe your kiddo, you're a little bit nervous if he needs ear tubes. Maybe he has congestion. Maybe he gets allergies. Maybe he gets lots of ear infections. I have some tips and tricks for you. So first, you need to try Zyrtec. Go ahead and give the Zyrtec before each dive. Um, additional to that, do some Afrin nasal spray. Do um, the, the squirt into each nostril before the dives, additional to the Zyrtec. 
That way, if he does have congestion, maybe he has sinus pressure, ear problems, things like that, those are all resolved and minimized while he gets into the chamber. Because many times we don't know, is he scared? And that's why he's crying, because I can almost guarantee you the first time he gets in the chamber, he'll be scared, he's gonna cry. Almost every provider says that by the time he's on his 10th treatment, 20th treatment, he's you know, hanging out in the chamber, watching his TV, excited to go in because he knows what to expect. So the initial time, you're not really sure, or he's not really sure what to expect. So go ahead and do those treatments. If he's, you know, you know, age one and a half, older, between four, you know, at that, that time where they can't really, you know, pop their ears, one trick we do for that though is the baby shark. If he, we talked about this last week too, if he moves his jaw, you know, baby shark, like that kind of helps, you know, popping your ears. So that trick, Afrin, um, Zyrtec, all of that good stuff. And if those don't work, um, then we have ear tubes. And ear tubes are easy to find. Another quick Google search, find something local in your area. A really big trick is um, if you just call the number on the back of your insurance card, they'll actually tell you all the providers and all the ENTs that are covered by you and where they're located around and then saves you trouble because you know they're a network, you know that um, that procedure will be covered and it's pretty easy for you. Um, it's a five minute procedure. I'll just pop the tubes in and call it a day and then you can go ahead and proceed with the treatments before if we recommended it and the treatments after and going into the ones before. So our protocol, um, of course, is always evolving and changing. We usually recommend 10 before and 20 after if the graft is placed. And I will let you know that there are times that the treatments beforehand do get denied. If that's the case, we don't want you to cancel surgery. We don't want you to reschedule. Call our office and we'll let you know what needs to be done further. Depending on the circumstances, we'll proceed with surgery and then other times we might reschedule and let you know what needs to be done. But more times than not, we don't reschedule, we don't cancel because the post-operative treatments are really what does the trick. After surgery, we wanna make sure he heals well. We wanna make sure that he has, gets that vascularity, gets that circulation. And that is by far what we care most about you know, compared to those pre-treatments. So good things to keep in mind, good things to understand. We talked about the tips, tricks, we talked about um, what to expect, all that good stuff. Yeah, so basically, um, I uh, hope that all this hyperbaric stuff is getting everyone excited and riled up. Um, next week, like I said, we're gonna talk about what exactly happens in, in the hyperbaric chamber, what the science is behind it, and, and why we think it's so important to do it immediately after surgery and kind of what to expect after that. So uh, stay tuned for next week. Super excited to talk with you. Have a great weekend. Bye.